appreciate you uh, sitting down with me. Uh, this is really an honor, one, because of who you are, but more than that, we're obviously here on a golf course, and it's a pretty uh, special bond in terms of the basketball players who, who love golf. Um, that, that group is growing by the year. There's a lot more people picking up the game, but you've been in it from for a long time, and I'm fascinated just to know how you balanced uh, you know, golf and basketball while you were playing. Because I'm in that boat right now, and I feel like sometimes I'm playing too much golf, but sometimes I feel like I'm not playing enough. Well, that's the, easy, that's the easiest point. I mean, that's the easiest question I can answer, is that, you know, when I was playing, it was snow on the ground in Chicago. <laughs> it was no golf courses. It was nothing. If it was, things would have been a little bit different. But I, I, I kind of got into golf uh, mainly because from a competitive standpoint, to me, it is the hardest game to play. Absolutely. Uh, I can always respond to a, an opponent, a defensive guy, offensive guy, whatever. But in golf, it's like playing in a mirror. And you're battling yourself consistently to try to get perfection every swing, every putt. Yeah. For a you know, competitive person like me, this is what keeps me sane. You know, Because when I walk away from the game of basketball, you know, that was enough to keep my competitive juices working. Absolutely. Now when I'm, I'm, I don't have that game, this game, and it even drives me crazy then. Now I go fishing in between my golf <laughs> because I got to show patience in fishing that's going to be rela relative to, to golf. Good morning and welcome to the first day of the 43rd Ryder Cup. We're here at the Ryder Cup, we're here at Whistling Straits. I'm, I'm fascinated by this event because this is my first time here. And when you get here and you see the, the atmosphere, you see the, you know, the chants and the noise. And I'm wondering, what do you think from a team perspective, you know, when guys are individuals throughout the whole year, how does that permeate in golf? Because with us, we get rah-rah in the, in the locker room. Sure. Like, how does that accountability, you think, work in that locker room when well, it's guys tough. are different journeys? It's tough, you know, I mean, I, I've had countless conversations with some of the players, and if I can put it in the most simplest terms, is that you know you have to give up bits and pieces of who you are mm -hmm. for the benefit of the team. I learned that later in my years because initially in basketball, I was so focused in my craft that that was matter. That's what matters the most. But to win, you have to give parts of yourself mm -hmm. to other people. Ryder Cup is very similar in the same sense. Yeah, you got Tiger Woods on your team. Tiger Woods can only win one point. Yeah, one point. <laughs> you know, and he may not even win. It depend on if you're playing alternate shot. Mm -hmm. So it's things that you have to, you know, factor in. Our best asset is on singles, you know, but we always seem to struggle in alternate shot and, two, and best ball. Uh, and that, I think, has been something that the European team has always been able to capitalize on. Well, a fixture at Ryder Cups through the years. I first remember seeing Michael Jordan at his first Ryder Cup in Valderrama, Spain in 1997. These guys could go to any event they want in the world oh, yeah. and they never miss the Ryder Cup. I know you've traveled to Europe and, and been on the road sure. venues. You've been in, in home venues. If you were on the Ryder Cup team, would you rather be playing on the on the road, you know, somewhere in Europe, playing against that road crowd, being able to shut them up, or would you rather be on home turf, you know, hyping, feeling the energy here with the uh, with the home you atmosphere. Know the to that. I know. I just want to hear it. I just want. I'd hear. rather be on the road. <laughs> I'd rather be on the road. You know, I love playing on the road, and it seems as though your concentration level is much much better. Mm -hmm. um, you know that you're not expected to win, so that you get have the opportunity to, to prove the unknown. Uh, and a lot of times when you play at home, you let your hair down. You get relaxed. You see more fr friends, you see more family, you gotta worry about tickets, you gotta worry about so many other different things. So I always love playing on the road so it minimizes my thought process and I can focus on my craft. And I, I would imagine if I was playing on the Ryder Cup, that's exactly, I would much rather play in Europe than to play home. And there's another one for Dustin Johnson. That's Michael Jordan on board. You've got a lot of different characters on the, the USA team. Who do you see yourself in the most in terms of their demeanor on the course or, wow, that's or something hard. about them? That's, that's I know. Hard. Um, you could say nobody because they ain't on your level yet. <laughs> no, I think, you know, I like to say that the you know, competitive nature is, is, is you, know, you can see it on a lot of the guys and it comes in a lot of different ways. You know, I can see a little bit of myself in JT. Mm -hmm. I can see a little bit of myself in Brooks. I can see a little bit of my calmness in, in 
confident in DJ. So, I mean, I can see a lot of those qualities that take to be successful. He's got President Bush, Michael Jordan, over his right shoulder. <laughs> He's got a big moment here to try to turn this thing around. Who on the European team would you be most scared to play against? And I hate using that word with you. I'm not scared of anybody. I mean, but uh, Ian Poulter. He is a every time I, I try to, you know, I used to go and watch him all the time. If I'm in any of his matches or walking down, he finds me after he makes a good putt, and it's like, man, I didn't do anything. I like you. I, heard, so I, I support you. you. I stay away from him when he's when he's walking. When I'm walking, I won't go watch him. You sparked the miracle of Madonna, right? <laughs> I didn't spark it. Hell no, I don't know. I had my own I had my own thoughts about it, but yeah. I didn't spark it. Those are maniacal eyes, aren't they? And we went from definitely winning the Medina to crying, driving home that we just got our butts kicked. And that is that's the important. There's always that debate on uh, whether you you hate losing more than you love winning, right? And I feel like, for me, losing just is the worst feeling in, in, in life at anything, whether it's cars, golf, basketball, whatever it is. Um, you know, how do you feel about that? And also, like, how do you think that translates in terms of a team competition in golf that these guys are going through? I hate losing. <laughs> I mean, it's not even a question. But I, I mean, I have to respect losing because losing is a part of winning. Yeah. You know, you never just you know win. You got to lose to win. And I think the one thing about you know the Ryder Cup situation is that we got to want it bad enough. It, we we were dominant early on, and now that they are, does it mean as much to us as it does to them? Absolutely. And if that's the case, then losing is going to hurt. Absolutely. And you got to have a sense of pride about yourself. It's not about the money. It's not about anything. It's more about the pride. And you know the best players, whoever's playing the best, is going to win. You know I hate that we've been playing bad that they won, but. I got a good feeling this year. Let's I got a good it. feeling. Let's do it. I appreciate you sitting down. I know how much golf means to both of us, and it's nice to connect on that level. Um, Anytime. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna bring my wallet next time we play. Come on All down to the Grove. I got absolutely, for you. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>